Hey guys, my name is John Grimsmo, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I make these. These are little spacers that I use on the back of my knives. They go right here. They are, of course, made from titanium. They are very small, about 0.23 inch diameter. Now this little guy is a perfect candidate to be made on a lathe. I do have a home-built CNC lathe, but I don't like it anymore. After using this awesome Tormac for over a year, my old lathe just does not cut it anymore. My level of precision is a far beyond what that old clunky sloppy lathe can do. So I don't want to make tons and tons of these on my lathe because it sucks. I don't want to farm it out because I want to keep it in house. And I would like to, if possible, make it on my Tormac. Now last year when I started making these um, from my first two batches of knives, I made them on my mill set up as a vertical lathe. So you put a bunch of lathe tools in a vise and you use round bar and the spindle and it feeds it down and it's just like a lathe basically. Works okay, a little slower than I would like and very one by one operations. So I'm trying to figure out how to make these in a pallet system so that I can make tons of them and I got it figured out. In this video we're going to go over that. Here's the fixture that I just made. It's basically a simple uh, O-ring on the outside. The holes are just clearance holes. Uh, this hole right here is my vacuum hole. I have to manually drill that all the way through because it does not go all the way through. Um, no big deal. And uh, yeah, on my big vacuum grid here, this uh, fixture I, I made myself, but it's a copy of Mighty Bytes vacuum fixture. I just made it bigger. Um, I have little uh, M6 screws right here and so I have two on the top and one on the side and all that does is just gives me positional accuracy um, so I can take this off and show you like I just did and then put it back on push it up against and then to the left and then I know it's nearly exactly where it was before close enough for what I'm doing um, so now I just need to find some gasket material shove it in the gaps and then here's my piece of titanium that I'm doing for this project. These will be my spacers for the knife. So I'm going to be making a round part from a huge piece of steel or titanium like this. So machining my spacers this way is pretty cool because uh, on a lathe, you can only machine one at a time. Even if you had a bar puller and all kinds of fancy CNC stuff, you can still only machine one at a time. I'm machining 80 at a time right now. So right now, it's done the chamfer, it's doing the drilling right now. And then it's going to go in and use a form tap to tap them for 440. It's going good so far. So now I have all my holes drilled to 0.1015, that's the perfect um, drilled hole size for a form tap, a 440 form tap. Keep this in mind all you machinists out there, I did not know this originally. A form tap requires a bigger sized pilot hole than a regular tap. Keep that in mind, it's a completely different tapping chart. And I had no idea about this when I started using form taps, and these little ones they break quite easily when the hole is too small. So I was using a 96 thou hole like you're supposed to and that's too small but a 1015 hole is perfect. Anywho, um, a form tap is pretty sweet. It's got no cutting flutes and it just sort of squishes its way into the hole and it deforms the metal both out and into the thread to create a thread. It's a very good way to make a thread, a very strong way. The taps are typically stronger and last longer maybe. Um, and there's just way more body to the tap because there's no cutouts, no flutes, so they're, they're really good stuff. But because they're squishing their way into the thread, you want a good lubrication. So I've got this bottle of Ultra Lube. I've had this forever, like six, seven years or something. It's only half gone, and um, I got it from Fastenal, I believe, way back when. So uh, instead of trying to apply stuff to the tap every time, I learned this on my first batch of Norseman knives. The easiest way to do it is just to take this and put a drop of lube on every single hole. So it takes a little bit of time, but whatever. And 
I like to think it's a good idea to use a thick, gloopy lube. I mean, this stuff is super thick, thicker than your typical oil, um, because it's just way slipperier, as opposed to the flood coolant or the mist coolant or anything. It's just not slippery enough to for that tap to get in there, because you're not cutting the threads. You're deforming them, so you want something super slippery. So I'm just going to go in here and dollop. And I'm not a lefty, so this is awkward. Okay, before I turn this on for tapping, I wanted to uh, point out a change that I made. Originally, I was sucking down the fixture to the vacuum grid, and then the titanium to the fixture, all with vacuum. Um, but due to a complete oversight and goof up on my part, I didn't even, I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, obviously, once you drill through the titanium, it loses vacuum, and it's just a stupid oversight. I was too sleepy or something. Once I pull this off later, I'll explain that, what I did and why I did better. But basically, I just uh, used four bolts on the outside that bolts it to the fixture, and then the fixture is still solid and bolts or suctions down to the um, vacuum base. So that was a good workaround, and uh, it, it ends up working good. So I lose four positions, four spacers on the outside, not a big deal. Duh. Got that just in time. Um, duh. Because I put the bolts there, it can't tap there. I could have sworn that I took those spots out, but obviously I did not. Beautiful. Excellent. That was fantastic. Jerk. Is it just me, or was that off-center? Was that not going straight down? It looked like it was going off to the side a bit. I don't know. I think I figured out what's happening here. I'm using Tormac's new tension compression tapping head. It's got another one right here. So it's spring loaded down and up as well. Um, I was using in the past their old one. This is much bigger. Um, this one uses some sort of weird uh, tap specific holder, which works really well. And these use ER16 collets. Um, these ones are good because they fit on the ATC and they're not too long, whereas this one's way too long. Um, but in form tapping in titanium, it's having trouble entering the hole because I just figured out the compression spring is a lot softer than this one. Um, like I'm used to using this one and I know this works with this one, but this one, I can do that with my thumb really easily. And this one, I can't, I can do the top part, but that's a lock, don't worry about that. Yeah, I need two fingers to do that. It's almost like twice the spring pressure, it feels like. Um, so it's just compressing and skipping on the hole until all of a sudden it catches and goes in, which is fine. But uh, it's not threading to the full depth that I want it to because it's compressing and compressing and compressing. Um, which will work, I just have to go back and re-tap them. It looks like they're tapping about halfway down uh, instead of all the way through, which is what I need. So I might have to tap them twice or I'll install this guy, which I might just go ahead and do right now. Um, I'm sure this small one would work great for softer metals, aluminum would not. And uh, if the pilot hole was even bigger, it would probably work better too. But with the exact configuration I have right now, that compression spring is too soft. Not a big deal. I'll put this guy in. That's why I have variety. So this is the new longer tapping head. Well, old longer tapping head. Um, let's see if it works. Looks like it. So this tapping head and that little form tap uh, worked awesome. It got through the entire rest of the pallet. Or of the thingy. I guess it's not really a pallet. And yeah, it worked super duper good. They're tapped all the way down and on to the next operation.
worked out pretty awesome so far. So at this point, I just have to flip it over, remount it, and then cut the shoulders on this side. So I feel like an idiot. I just sliced my finger really, really good. Um, that super cool thin piece, mounting it upside down. And I had this pallet balanced upright like this, just for a second. And then I saw it start to tip over and fall onto the table, so I was like, no! So I grabbed it and I, I just tore my finger through one of these corners. Real deep cut. But uh, believe it or not, super glue worked super awesome. I was quickly mildly worried about if there's any, you know, toxicity to super glue or whatever, so I googled it and no, apparently it's super safe. Um, yeah, so that worked really good just to close the cut. And, Anywho, put a band-aid on it, back to work, um, be much more careful next time. Excellent success. There's probably about 160 here, which is enough for 80 knives, which is more than enough that I need for this batch. They're all exactly the right thickness. They're all threaded through the middle for 440. And there is a hidden gem that most people owning my knives will never end up seeing but the few of you who do take it apart will be pleasantly surprised. I'm kind of debating whether or not I should even show this on video or whether I should leave it as a surprise for future owners of the knives. However, it's so cool I just gotta show it. This is pretty cool. Alright, so you got your spacer here, just like any old lathe turned spacer, uh, except since I made them on a mill, I'm like, well, uh, let's engrave them. Because I can, and because it would be awesome. So if you look very closely, every single one is engraved with the text Grimsmo Knives on both sides. Yeah, that's right. Nobody else does that. Only us. Because we're that awesome. Because we can. And because I'm a sucker for completely over the top doing as much as I can to make these things absolutely wickedly awesome. This is an absolute exercise in pointless fertility. But... It is super cool. I'm very happy that the surface finish of the radius part in the center looks so good. Being cut with an end mill, not turned on a lathe. And if we wanted to, we could uh, polish that up real quick with the Dremel polishing wheel. So, um, they do take quite a bit of time to make. But most of the machining is relatively hands-off. But yeah, because, because of the time involved, they're not free. Making them on the lathe might be quicker, but doing it my way maximizes tool changes. So it can machine 160 parts with the one tool, and then switch to the next tool and machine 160 parts, instead of doing a tool change for every single part for every single tool, like a lathe has to do. So... 
it, my way might actually be a lot faster. Um, it's hard to say because I, I haven't timed this on a lathe. However, um, the accuracy is there and I can make them repeatedly and they are super awesome. And of course, being titanium, they can be anodized a myriad of awesome colors. And there you have it. I'm very happy with how these turned out. Next up, I'll be making thumb studs. So I gotta figure that out and uh, hopefully do a video on that. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.